Hey there, toy collector friends and Doctor Who fans alike. Welcome back to the channel. This is the Time Travelling Toy Collector and this is um, entry number 190 from the Hero Collector Doctor Who figurine range and it's Ashard, um, the lone Cyberman, as he appeared um, across the last um, two or three stories in the 13th Doctor's uh, penultimate full season. Um, which I think was season 12, if memory serves. Um, uh, so here we have, I mean, this is again a, fa a lovely little figure. Again, to remind those of you who are perhaps unfamiliar with this, I, <laughs> contrary to uh, the evidence in front of you, I don't collect the figurine collection. And part of the reason for that is going to become clear during uh, this little walkthrough. However, I was very taken during a sale that Hero Collector ran um, and I picked up the Dalek Parliament set, which was a set of 10 of their Dalek figurines. And I quickly followed that up with part two. Um, and I was very taken with that, as indeed I am with many of their, their monster and alien representations, um, to the point where when there was a further offer, um, I saw some of the Cybermen figures, including the evolution of the Cybermen set, um, part two, was uh, available on sale. So I, I invested in a few of those. Because again, in my experience, Hero Collector do an excellent job of the monsters and the aliens and the robots and so forth. Where I'm a bit more reserved um, is in their humanoid and human-esque figures. Uh, I don't always feel they are quite as um, effectively painted, uh, sculpted, as perhaps their aliens and monsters are. So that's my opinion, and I appreciate others very much may disagree with that, and I, I have, you know, I have no problem with that. But if I'm going to invest in a collection, and again, as I say, this is, I, this, is, this is number 190, and that doesn't include special releases and various other bits and pieces, then I'm going to want all 190 of those to look uh, of an equal quality. And unfortunately, I just don't think they can. Now, this figure, Ashad, because again, I do want to try and get uh, all of the cyber-related figures that I, that I can do. Um, this figure is an interesting hybrid. The character itself is a hybrid. It's a partially converted Cyberman. Um, there's still personality traits of his original character in there. Um, there's also uh, an interesting and eclectic mix of cyber parts from across the different elements of cyber design. Um, and we'll see what we can see of that in, in the figure itself, in the figurine itself. Um, but again, it also highlights for me what doesn't work um, in the Hero Collector range of figurines, which is a per purely personal opinion, and I do not expect anyone, if indeed uh, at all, to necessarily agree with that. Um, just to kick off, um, as always, these individually uh, packaged figures come in their own little pod. Uh, very nice it is too. So you could use it for display purposes. Um, on the back, you can see how it's, in, it's numbered uh, within the collection. And it also identifies the figure itself. The episode it appeared in, uh, uh, The Haunting of Villa uh, Diodati, um, and The Doctor Encountered, which in this case is the 13th Doctor, as portrayed by Jodie Whittaker. Um, it does come with a magazine, and we will take a look um, a little at the magazine shortly. Um, unfortunately, more to make my point about why I don't collect them. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm going to zoom in a little bit more on the figure itself and rotate it round for you. Um, so starting with the plus points, as always with Hero Collector figures and figurines and models, um, and something I can't really criticise too much, is the level of surface detailing. I think if we look at this figure, this figurine, it's impossible not to acknowledge the level of detailing. You can see here on the back um, the, 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 the pipe work that we're familiar with across certain earlier iterations of Cybermen. Um, again, the, the baggy trouser <laughs> kind of approach is very reminiscent of very early Cybermen. Um, we see here the, the left arm is very much unconverted. Um, and the rings that are around the arm and the, and the white underlay and the, and the exposed hand, very reminiscent of the original Mondasian Cybermen. There's a, 
something on there. I'm not sure what that was. Could be a pet hair. Could be a goodness knows what. Um, as we rotate it round, we can see, again, the elements of um, previous cyber cyber warriors, uh, including the the, uh, the cabling. We move up into the torso. This is a torso that is particularly reminiscent um, of the Cybermen as they appeared opposite Matt Smith uh, and Peter Capaldi. Um, we can see the silver neck bracing. I'm going to rotate back again a little bit. There's a couple of things I want to keep in shot here. So we can see the nice arm mounted gun here with a nice little bit of blue detailing where the, the, the laser itself is emitted from. And some quite nice, I'm going to tilt it here, some quite nice silver detailing around the neck piece. Uh, far more reminiscent of the cyber colours we, we're accustomed to. Then up here in the face, I'm going to bring it a bit closer for us. Um, we can see the helmet arrangement there. Um, and the helmet arrangement is... Well, it's really where I start to be a bit more disappointed. And I'll get an, into why. Um... Here we can see the faceplate that's been eaten away, um, either through erosion or through a lack of complete trans uh, of conversion, and the face of uh, Ashad, who was the the the, the uh, being that existed prior to the cyber conversion started, showing through slightly. There, there's an eye and a, and a hint of mouth, and a hint of nose, which is in keeping with with how the character appeared. Um, and there is this black panelling here um, around the side. Uh, but then the rest of it looks a bit like the rusted old helmet uh, we saw in things like Closing Time or the Pandorica Opens uh, around the, some of the, the damaged Cybermen there. And unfortunately for me, this is the kind of... Re this is, and it's gonna, it might seem really nitpicky, and apologies to those of you who... Uh, roll your eyes because I'm, I am mindful that I also am very lenient when it comes to some of the paint jobs on some of the starships that I've collected from them. Um, but I think a starship scale is one thing. If you're if you're going to create um, and display a, a, a figurine, it wants to be something that people can really engage with and look at and feel is evocative. And yeah. I'm not regretting this figure because, you know, it's great figure. It is very evocative. But the helmet sculpt is not correct. The colouring of the sculpt particularly is not correct. This segment here uh, should be silver plated rather than the same sort of rusty uh, brown wash that we have across the rest of it. It should be silver and it should be very apparently silver. Um, the skin colour is is white, which would be which would be right, um, but there's there's scope to have some of the veins we could have seen. Again, I'm I'm being nitpicky. I appreciate I'm being nitpicky, but I, I it just considering we've got such terrific detail. So again, I don't want to lose sight of being positive around this. There's real terrific detail on this figure. I mean, it is really well detailed. Just look at that body sculpt uh, and the cyber armor that's on there. And again, we'll come, we'll stay up close and look at that pipe work, which really does look like pipes hanging off his body. So, you know, I can't, I'm not slighting that. And I love the, the detailing and the colors, the, the blue really pops on the back there. And the silver really step, stick, uh, you know, stands out where it is visible. It's just a shame that the head sculpt and that particular aspect of the helmet has been ever so slightly neglected but it's a great it's a great figurine it lends itself very well um, to up up close and personal toy photography and sculpt photography sculpt work and model photography uh, so you know I'm, I'm 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 not displeased with the fact that I have the figure I'm disappointed that uh, the quality of the figure overall is not perhaps as 100% as I would like. Uh, I, I present Exhibit A, which is the magazine that I mentioned, and right there, slap bang on the front, is um, the face of uh, Ashad, and you can see here exactly what I mean. This section is silver. Yes, we have the scarring uh, and the, the battle score damage, etc., um, etc. Et 
Um, and so much of the figure is right. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I know I'm talking about negatives, but I'm talking about very small negatives in the bigger picture. But I, it's just the thing that gets in the way of me collecting the actual figurine ranges because when it comes to the intricacy of facial painting and facial sculpting, it doesn't always do it for me. And disappointingly, something here that could just have been, you know, painted silver isn't. Uh, and so subsequently, it, it doesn't look like, um, for me, as close to the character as it could do. Now, I'm not going to go through all the different pages of the magazine um, because uh, I'm more focused here on the figure. But I'm going to come in a little bit closer again on the figure for you as we as we wrap this up. Um, but I am very, very... I want, I want to be very, very clear that I am still committed to this, this idea that he, uh, Hero Collector Eagle Moss do a sterling, sterling job of their, their model work for robotic, uh, mechanical, um, anything that's, that's sort of slightly alien, uh, or the, or the Starship Rangers, the TARDIS consoles, for example, in the, in the majority of cases, um, are very well uh, executed models. And there are a couple of uh, discrepancies within that. But uh, if you want to check that out, you can see the TARDIS consoles playlist and you'll, you'll see what I have to say about, about those. Um, but again, as a, as a standalone model, they're all the, about eight centimetres um, in height. They have the uh, the... The badge of honour on the base, which identifies that it is a Doctor Who uh, um, licensed product and its name, the episode it appeared in. Um, and, you know, the, again, I'm 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 conscious I'm being picky, um, and I almost feel bad for doing it, but it is it is the opinion I have to share because it is the one thing that within the the figurine range is, is kind of what put me off jumping in wholeheartedly is that sense that it isn't quite 100% or, or even sort of 95%. I'd, I'd take anything above uh, between 90 to 95% accurate, I would, I would be probably there for, because I would always allow for scale and I would always allow for price point, etc. cetera. Um, and these are not super expensive as an individual standalone piece, uh, especially when they're in the sale, he says. Uh, however, if you're collecting, for example, 190 of them and more, um, that suddenly does mount up, if you think about it. If they're £10, 10, pounds, uh, 10 pounds plus, uh, $10 per, per figurine-ish, well, you can see how, how much you're spending, how much you're investing suddenly, and you do want it to be the best possible figurine collection that you could possibly have so that's really where i come from on that but aside from my minor niggles i love this figure i love the character of this figure i love how it uh, works alongside the other cybermen that i've already uh, uh, presented to you uh, and at some point i will get them together for a bit of a, a bit of a showcase but uh yeah so but i i, I feel i do need to particularly because other people have been quite right in picking up the Certain other hero collector sculpts in the Starship ranges aren't always 100%, and, and they're right, they're not always 100%. But for me, in a Starship, you can kind of, that can get lost in the bigger detail. When you're working at this sort of scale of a figurine, it, it, my eye is drawn to the imperfections, just as I imagine other people's eyes are drawn to the imperfections of paintwork on um, Space 1999 Eagles or Star Trek, Starship Enterprise. Um, shadowing and shading for example um, so I don't I totally understand where people are coming from with that I, I come from the same place uh, when looking at this but I just for me it's it's a it's an issue of scale and issue of cost um, and I think in terms of this the, the, the up close um, nature of this it is it's to me it stands out a lot um, and I, and I am I'm sorry about that because I'd love to just say I think it's a magnificent, super, super, super figure uh, without any flaws. Um, so all of the above, except I just think it's a bit flawed around here. And it, and the thing is, it wouldn't have taken a huge amount to correct it, which I guess is what other people would say about the Starship. So it's a, it's a, it's you know, 
uh, one man's one man's meat is another man's poison or something, which I think also is the Space 1999 episode title or thereabouts. Or that might have been one of their annuals. I am now mindful I'm rambling, so I should probably go and lie down in a cyber conversion chamber uh, and await the next video. Thank you very much uh, for sticking with me, uh, particularly as I've just slightly lost the plot in the last couple of minutes. <laughs> um, I hope that this up close and personal view of the figurine, uh, the lone Cyberman, has been instrumental in helping you decide whether or not it's something that you might feel has a place in your collection. Maybe you already have it um, and you have a view on, on its accuracy. Uh, maybe having seen this, you go, yeah, actually, I'm, I think I'll, it's, it's a pass for me. Either way, I, as long as it's been useful um, or you've just enjoyed having an up close and personal look at the figurine um, and you have no intention and never have had of purchasing it, then I'm really, really pleased. Um, so do please give me, give the channel a like, give the episode, uh, uh, the video a like. And uh, why not also hit, a hit the subscription button and turn on notifications so you never miss a future Cyberman or Dalek or console um, uh, video or indeed anything else that may be of interest to you. I've got a few playlists that you might want to check out um, if you want to filter out some of the other content uh, which might be Star Trek related or Transformers related or Battlestar Galactica related. Um, could be anything. Have a, have a look, see what you see. Have a, have a little nose around, see what you like. Um, thank you so much for staying with me for the last 15 or 16 minutes. It's a, an absolute pleasure to have you along. You've been a fantastic audience. This has been uh, Ashad, the lone Cyberman from the Hero Collector range. Uh, and I have been the time traveling toy collector. Um, so all it remains for me to say is thank you for being here. Hope to see you in a future video. And do remember that a thing of beauty really is a toy forever. Take care. Thank you. And bye bye for now. <laughs>